I would now like to introduce you to my colleague, Meg Gaw. Uh, she is the Marketing and Communications Manager here with Ovarian Cancer Canada. Um, welcome, Meg. I'm going to let you take it away. For sure. So thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. I am joined today by Julia in Montreal, Melanie in Halifax, and Starlet in Saskatoon. These women were all enjoying full lives, careers, and their families when they were each diagnosed with late-stage ovarian cancer. This disease is unfair, but Ovarian Cancer Canada is determined to make change a reality. Improved outcomes are possible, and a brighter future is within reach. As part of our year-end campaign, our year-end fundraising campaign, these incredible Three Teal Sisters stories will be shared in a letter and emails to supporters on social media and on our website. And our ask is that people read their stories, share their powerful words, and inspire your networks to donate during the giving season to help fund research into Ovarian Cancer Canada and programs that support Teal Sisters. So first up, I want to ask Julia, you know, why do you want to share your story with others? Hi, Megan. Well, thanks for having me tonight. Megan, actually, for so many good reasons, but I actually did the top three that I put on my vision board. So the first reason why I want to share my story is to give hope. I have to admit, that in the fall of 2020, when I was just diagnosed, I didn't have much hope. I was really sick at the hospital with a advanced cancer, plus I didn't have an optimal surgery. So that means that I still had residual disease after my surgery. But the good news is that today I'm still here, considered stable, no evidence of the disease, uh, I have a C125 that is still in the normal range and I'm not done fighting. So that's the good news. The second reason why I want to share my story tonight is to show people that we can actually live with cancer. We can actually live with adversity. Looking back in my past two years, I realized how I lived beautiful experiences. Um, I actually did one bucket list trip with my brother, one bucket list trip with my mother. I actually got married as well. I was about to forget about this one, but I got married. And I was lucky enough to become the godmother to a beautiful little girl called Julia that was named, uh, well, after me, and that uh, was born two days after my birthday. So, and uh, the third reason why I want to share my story is because I want change. We, we all want change. And that's why I'm here tonight. I still feel uh, very frustrated that over in cancer doesn't have the same visibility and the same funding uh, as other cancers, such as breast cancer, prostate cancer. I want to see research continue to progress. And I want to see research continue to evolve. And that's why it's important for me to be here tonight. Awesome. Thank you. And Starla, I want to turn it over to you. One way you've shared your story is on social media and you've spread the realities of an ovarian cancer diagnosis on social media. And what have you found the power of social media awareness to be? I think that especially in the last few years, social media has really taken off as a way to connect with one another and um, when I started out sharing my story on social media, it was just to be able to really raise awareness and to use it as a teaching tool as well. And I found it to be really successful in that I'm able to connect with um, all, all types of people from all over the world that are maybe going through a, something similar, or maybe they've gone through what I've gone through. Um, it's nice to just be able to connect with even those that are newly diagnosed and being able to kind of give them not necessarily tips and tricks, but just kind of be that person that they may need just someone to talk to really in that support. That's awesome. And um, we mentioned that all of the stories, your stories will be shared on social media. So if people follow along on Ovarian Cancer Canada on Facebook and Instagram and Ovarian Canada on Twitter, um, then that people will be able to share your stories with others as well, which is really exciting. Um, Melanie, you know, a big part of this campaign is that we want people to donate because we want to progress research further. 
And what does it mean to you when someone donates specifically towards research? Oh, you're muted. There you go. <laughs> oh. I, I, just, I just realized that I was just starting. I do that all the time. You think by now I'd be used to that. <laughs> Um, so for, for me, donating and, and donors that are contributing to, to cancer research and ovarian cancer research specifically, I, I think bottom line is just it's hope. Um, so we know we all we're all very familiar and we all know very well that ovarian cancer is a sneaky disease. Um, and for many of us, it isn't diagnosed until the later stages of the disease and it really never goes away. So I know that doesn't sound all that helpful, uh, but donations to research means new ideas, new discoveries and, and new treatments. Um, researchers are designing studies aimed at reducing treatment-related toxicities and improving outcomes, meaning uh, longer survival and, and better quali overall quality of life. Um, so donation supports Ovarian Cancer Canada's efforts in bringing researchers from across Canada together and collaborate and share their experiences and expertise, um, as well as their research findings um, to go farther faster. So there's been a lot of recent uh, advances, a lot of reasons to be hopeful, um, but we know there's still a lot more work left to do. Um, so to our, our donors and folks that support Ovarian Cancer Canada, again, it, it allows us as those um, dealing with ovarian cancer and our families, it gives us more time with our children, more time with our family, more time with our loved ones. Um, and it helps build hope where uh, not that long ago, there wasn't a whole lot of hope to be had. Yeah, and I think one thing that I found really interesting when I joined the ovarian cancer team is that just 25 years ago, there were only three scientists dedicated to the study of ovarian cancer. And now because of Ovarian Cancer Canada, the community is 250 uh, strong and growing. And they're some of the most collaborative scientists in the world. And um, you know, every donation, no matter how small, how big, goes towards um, those scientists. And, and the next big breakthrough could be around the corner because of your donation, which is, is so exciting. Um, Melanie, speaking of donors, I just wanted to ask if you could say something to our donors who are giving, who might be on the call today, what is, what would you like to say to, to donors? I, I think the, the, the easiest, quickest, it's just, thank you. Um, again, like I said, it's, it's, it's about building hope and giving those of us and our families that are confronted by this disease and our loved ones more time, um, you know, and it's, and I know a lot of the women I've spoken with and, and some of the conversations over the last couple of days, it's like, if I could make it one more day, um, then there's, there's maybe that next thing that, um, well, maybe there is the cure, maybe there is another treatment that can help me make it one more day. Um, and that's, it's, it's living for today and, and being hopeful that we'll have more tomorrows. That's so great to hear. Um, Julia, you know, one way that people can support is to become a monthly donor. And if somebody does become a monthly donor right now, their donation will be doubled, which is really exciting. Um, and they can do that at ovariancanada.org slash brighter future. That's my plug. <laughs> um, but Julia, if, if somebody becomes a monthly donor, what does that mean to you? It means the world to me. <laughs> um, a, bit, a bit like Melanie said, uh, it would give me hope more hope and there's never enough hope, honestly. Um, it would give me the chance to just be able to dream of a future, of a brighter future, of a longer future, and that's a lot. So I would say thank you as well. That's awesome. Um, and Starla, quickly, we're running out of time, but I, you've been amazing. You were on the symposium yesterday as well. And why do you want to share your story with others? I think that for me, um, the reason why I really wanted to start sharing my story is because when I was diagnosed in 2010, I was in my early 20s and, you know, going through chemo and all that stuff, I just wanted to see my face when I was having chemo. When I sat in that chair and I looked around the room, it was all older people. There was nobody in their early 20s. It was just me. And I think I would have given anything just to be able to sit down with somebody that was my age and be able to talk with them about what we were going through, you know, losing your hair, uh, the loss of fertility, um, all that type of stuff that, you know, any um, Teal sister would go through, but I just desperately wanted somebody my own age to be able to connect with. And so through sharing my story, 
I hope that I'm able to be that face to somebody that maybe is younger, newly diagnosed and is able to look and be like, Hey, like I'm, I'm there now, like I'm going through that. And uh, yeah, I just want to be that person that I was looking for when I was going through the treatments. And I think there's probably with, you know, 500 people registered, somebody is going to have seen you today and yesterday and see themselves in you. So thank you for being here. And thank you to all three of you, uh, Julia, Starla, and Melanie, for being here with me today. And thank you to our donors and our supporters as well. Ovarian Cancer Canada is driving research further, faster, and leading an international movement to galvanize Canada's ovarian cancer research community. And that's all thanks to you. So to ensure this progress continues, please consider making a donation. And you can do that on our website now at ovariancanada.org. Thank you so much.